this lecture we will discuss about campus planning and design of IIT Gandhinagar. Well, to my understanding, as far as uh, like I have studied and uh, uh, done this case studies, one of the actually role models, you know, campuses which has come up in the like recent times, in the recent years. And it's definitely, I think, because uh, of the like, continuous and persistent uh, efforts by the director of IIT Gandhinagar, Professor Sudhir K. Jain, and uh, his very ef uh, efficient and uh, persistent team, which has been uh, on this task for last, not less than like a 10 12 years now. And uh, they have designed, they have actually. Uh, like a, you know a, a given their like a keen interest in the uh, creating actually a sustainable actually campus a sustainable project you know and they have actually tried to address the three aspects of sustainability you know environmental social and economical you know in various ways possible you know so at least uh, by going through this case study you will see the intent you know what uh, kind of intent they have actually uh, formulated and accordingly like how they have formulated the design how they have conceptualized the entire actually uh, uh, design of the IIT Gandhinagar and lately like how they have actually executed it the campus is still under construction but uh, in its like a, a first phase of development it has received Griha five star rating so which is one of the highest actually ratings uh, uh, presently in India but the overall impact if you see of IIT Gandhinagar on the three uh, uh, ESE aspects it reflects in its true sense so that is why i believe like uh, this is one of the actually role model actually design and execution uh, projects in the recent times and uh, yeah so we must actually learn from this so let's uh, uh, go on this journey and explore more on this so well uh, in the this is actually satellite map of uh, iit gandhinagar uh, uh, and the city of gandhinagar you can see over here so at the scale of like at the city you can see how big this campus is and it's like a uh, like a critical location so it's right across the actually this uh, river of uh, Sabarmati here on the other side so yeah so this was uh, obviously before the construction so you see like it's a green actually field uh, project so it was like a uh, it carries even like a uh, grave responsibility even like a more responsibility to perform on the like a sustainability aspects so let's see like it's the brief actually uh, introduction and the summary of this project data of this project well it's an institutional campus you know location uh, palaj village of like uh, uh, near the city of uh, gandhinagar in the district of gandhinagar in the gujarat india site area approx like a uh, 400 acres uh, developable land what they have taken is around uh, 250 acres rest of the 150 acre is still uh, left for like a, a future expansion and the green uh, as a, like a green area project details uh, well, uh, uh, phase 1A, uh, ident uh, academic buildings, hostels for like a 1200 students, staff quarters. You know, phase 1 has a hostel for like a 1200 students, guest house, support facilities, director's residence, sports facilities and arcade. Phase 2 has a hostel for like 2400 students, additional academic and other built up area. Uh, phase 3 has finally like a hostel for like a 1200 more students, additional academic and other built up areas. So the project summary. The master plan designed to address the total strength of uh, uh, approx 6,000 students and uh, supporting faculty and staff has been divided into three phases, what we saw. The architectural and infrastructure design of phase 1A and phase 1 for like a 2,400 students and supporting faculty and staff were developed keeping in perspective the long-term objectives of IIT Gandhinagar as well as catering to the present and immediate future. Well, the architects, uh, the main actually uh, chief architects involved from like a, uh, three different uh, uh, architecture like a consultancies. So you can see their names over here. Architect Vinod Gupta from Space Cons uh, Consultants New Delhi. Architect Ujan Ghosh from Uppal Ghosh uh, Associates New Delhi. And uh, Architect Muhammad Shahir from uh, MSYK Designs New Delhi. Well, there are other uh, uh, agencies and institutions also involved in the design and execution of this project. Well, their names are not uh, given over here. So some of the campus hi uh, highlights, this data I have uh, actually sourced from the like IIT Gandhinagar's website and they are generous enough. I really actually uh, praise the effort by the director, you know, Professor Sudhir Kumar uh, Jain, 
who has actually uh, inspired his team to create and, uh, do and uh, document this entire actually processes of this design and implementation and they have made those documents available on the IIT Gandhi Nagar website for referencing. So I am really thankful to them for actually this effort. Uh, usually uh, they, like uh, such kind of uh, designs actually go unnoticed because uh, uh, the resource material, the research material is not actually made available to the public. So I am sure I think uh, it's one of the actually novel approaches on this front also because the future architects, designers and like other like researchers and students such as you can actually benefit from actually such resources. So you can visit IIT Gandhi Nagar website, you can find actually such like these research materials over there, these documents over there. So for the like a student housing, I'm just quickly reading these six hostel blocks accommodating both UG and PG students. Even uh, like each block having a capacity of about like a 1200 students, uh, sorry 200 students, a common hostel library and a reading area, a spacious single and double seated rooms, specially designed to be accessible to persons with disabilities, you know, energy efficient, modern style designs drawing inspiration from traditional Ahmedabad architecture that we'll also uh, discuss in the coming slides. So how this, uh, the dry and arid uh, region of like a Gujarat, you know, and it's like a vernacular architectural style has played role in evolving the, uh, the concept of uh, these housing areas is also uh, like uh, interesting to witness. Uh, for the dining, uh, central uh, dining facility for all the students, two independent mess facilities, modern and well-equipped kitchen, a variety of food and beverage joint uh, uh, spread across the campus, a large central cafeteria with open air seating. Further in the sports, football, cricket, volleyball, basketball, jogging track, you know, hockey, gymnasium and other like a table tennis games, etc. for like a indoor, outdoor, like a gaming and sports facilities. Recreational spaces such as like a terrace gardens, you know, riverside promenade, rooftop over open air theatres, gel mandaps, you know, central vista, two natural lakes are also actually, uh, you know, uh, kept in the inside the actually IIT Gandhi Nagar campus. So as you like a, a highlight, we can see these numbers. Okay, like a 400 acres is the total land area on the banks of river Sabarmati. Six architectural firms, you know, from different parts of the country, you know, collaborated on this venture. You know, 100 feet uh, tall landmark tower is one of the actually most distinctive architectural features, you know, present on the campus. 1200 students accommodated till date and uh, 6000 students will be accommodated by the end of the project. So that is about the 1200 students in the phase 1 and phase 1A. Uh, further like a 3.5 kilometer uh, of riverfront adorning the campus so one of the actually long stretches you know uh, along this uh, uh, river a beautiful river you know and they have a uh, uh, they have actually located 75 trees so 75 trees transplanted using advanced hydraulic machines so that they need not actually cut them down for the like a construction actually stays so it's a novel approach to relocate uh, uh, these actually grown up trees you know from uh, uh, one place to another Further, uh, it's a green campus, a plethora of green initiatives are being undertaken in the campus. Uh, interactive campus, the campus has been designed to foster interdisciplinary and uh, inter-batch interactions, free and open campus. Institute philosophy allows all kinds of new initiatives and experiments. Uh, smart campus, a wide range of innovative technologies have been implemented to make intelligent campus. Well, so this is a, like an introductory uh, actually page you can see over here about the like a master plan, how they have actually evolved this master plan. So you can see the two key architects, uh, you know, associated uh, with this project since its inception. Architect Vinod Gupta, I have actually personally uh, like a, have some uh, correspondence from him also on the regard of this, uh, like the, the uh, regarding the research on the IIT Gandhi Nagar actually uh, campus like a design and the Griha rating. So he was uh, actually uh, uh, gentle enough to reply and uh, uh, satisfy actually my questions. Further, you can see the, the goals what they have actually established over time uh, for this project is to efficient use of land, efficient use of built space, you know, zero water import, zero uh, uh, waste export, you know, mobility without cars, so preservation of biodiversity, social equity, cultivation of food on site, you know, harvesting energy on site, Griha rated campus. So you see some of these actually are very common as like other projects also, but some of these actually uh, goals are not so common at other projects so, such as you can see like zero water import so the the in, in principle it is a uh, like a uh, uh, taken over here that uh, uh, the water requirement will be actually met from the like a uh, site itself and that is why they have actually created a 
uh, actually a very strong actually uh, network of actually water uh, harvesting and water actually connecting actually and water filtration and treatment actually uh, like a facilities on the campus they are located in different parts of the campus you know and uh, zero waste exports so that means like a uh, no waste will be actually uh, thrown out of the campus will be sent out of the campus so they have their own uh, actually on campus uh, uh, actually disposal uh, systems also in place for example like a, a green waste like a kitchen waste you know vegetables and other like a uh, such like organic waste so they have a actually recycler on the campus itself further uh, like uh, uh, it promotes uh, you know uh, uh, preservation of biodiversity because uh, as we saw in the like a master plan this site is a, like a green field site and it has a traditionally been like a, uh, either like a agricultural or like a ravinous you know uh, the barren area uh, which had actually n number of like trees and other like a flora and fauna inhabiting on uh, this place for a very long time and uh, yeah cultivation on uh, of food on site so this also is one of the novel uh, uh, initiatives this campus has taken and they have promoted actually this uh, uh, agriculture all the farming on the campus by the faculty staff and their family members even like students you know so that the new generation can at least learn how this agricultural world how and where we source our actually food from so this is one of the actually novel initiatives because the uh, the children these days who are actually coming from the like urbanized areas they have actually for like a, a certain number of years they do not actually have this exposure of idea where are we sourcing uh, like our food whenever we ask them where are we getting our food from they mention about the answer actually the uh, supermarkets well that's not correct okay so this is one of the actually interesting uh, uh, actually initiatives you know taken personally from the director and he has actually promoted uh, yeah and uh, you know again like a harvesting energy on site so they have actually uh, some solutions like a photovoltaic cells and uh, like other things to generate actually energy on the campus itself uh, okay some uh, brief you know about uh, the like a built up area you can see over here we actually uh, don't have the any need to uh, repeat uh, these numbers but you see the number of total numbers in the different phases from 1200 to uh, 20 uh, 2400 up to like a 2400 uh, finally like uh, up to like uh, the project will house 6000 uh, uh, students in the future okay so land use if you see this is the actually master plan you can see over here uh, th this uh, actually campus has this college village you know impregnating in the middle of uh, this uh, uh, this is stretch so uh, they, they have actually made uh, some arrangements to keep actually their interaction you know uh, with this village people you know uh, existing and, and, and continuing for uh, like a longer period of time so there are some actually uh, considerable efforts you know given in this direction also to not to create a very hard and uh, tall uh, actually a boundary wall and uh, bifurcating uh, as a, like a boundary wall you know from here from this village to, to, to this campus so they have actually uh, a soft you know a half height wall over here uh, through which still uh, there there will be a sense of you know connectivity a virtual connectivity from this side to the other side uh, yeah so if you see like uh, this uh, climate on the climate terms this place uh, falls in like a hot and dry actually region and it remains so for like a longer period of time up to like a six months and hot and humid for like a three months and three months are relatively comfortable in the like a winter months okay so cooling is required for like most of the year during the dry summer months humidification is also required so as you may be aware of uh, gujarat and rajasthan regions are one of the actually uh, hottest and uh, arid regions so the humidity also goes uh, very uh, like a little in these months so this uh, humidification is also needed in some of these months and of course uh, uh, cooling the temperature is also required because these are these are one of the very hot regions of india uh, in the july and august they are uh, well there is a, a rainfall plenty like a, uh, the rainfall and the at actually atmosphere becomes like a pleasant you know climate is hot and without actually cooling systems the buildings cannot be made comfortable only through passive structural arrangements so as we can see it, it, it is actually the climate's requirements is the geographical actually a compulsion that's actually this uh, project could not actually survive completely on the like a uh, uh, passive actually cooling methods and that is why actually they have gone to adopt a, a, like a, a controlled uh, other like a mechanical ways of uh, controlling the temperature and the humidity on the campus so this uh, slide gives you uh, this uh, geographical actually uh, you know uh, 
location like how is it uh, divided into like a two parts there is actually road which passes from like a, the middle uh, from here and this is the location of this Polish village okay but uh, almost if you see the 40 percent of this uh, land is uh, ravinous you know and uh, uh, this thing so it's very interesting actually this land formation and it's actually habited to several like a uh, like a species of like a reptiles you know insects and animals you know traditionally uh, since it is uh, located next to this river so this has been so for a very long time and the approach in the like a design of this actually campus is like uh, to cause the minimal disturbance to these uh, this uh, actually habitat you know and uh, they have tried to uh, maintain actually these ravines as it is this is one of the actually novel approaches you know adopted uh, in this actually project so you can see the location of this uh, village location of this uh, river you know the ravines and like the the highway and the road network in this plan further uh, like as a inspiration they have not used uh, this uh, uh, modern actually these uh, city planning and uh, these actually uh, grid layouts rather they have used uh, this uh, compact built form you know model after the like uh, old uh, Ahmedabad actually city so if you visit the uh, older Ahmedabad city okay this uh, like uh, this is actually a traditional actually vernacular architectural uh, planning system to plan like neighbors in a like a uh, tightly knit actually spaces with the like a uh, uh, taller houses and uh, narrower actually lanes in order to reduce the actually sunlight you know the direct sunlight in the like open spaces and the common areas okay so that is actually principle used in the design of the uh, habitation areas and the uh, community areas residential areas on the campus some more actually details you can see like a uh, energy efficient buildings like a uh, uh, are designed you know up to three floors so that uh, they are uh, easily walkable you know no need of like uh, elevators and lifts you know and a use of like natural resources for like a solar energy harvesting and rainwater harvesting etc so you see like how the designs of like a, you know the corridors and like the the overhangs are actually taken care of so that the water and like a solar energy can be harvested you know social equity so the for this region they have actually created uh, on site actually permanent labor housing facilities so that uh, the workforce who is employed on the campus can also be actually taken care of you know social equity outsourced actually workers housing so you see here like uh, the, the, this housing actually created for them e rickshaw uh, facility is there on the campus and apart from that well this campus is designed to promote actually uh, walking and cycling so and uh, several like other like a passive uh, uh, cooling methods are also implied so day for daylighting uh, uh, like uh, you see like uh, some efforts are made to increase the uh, daylighting inside the actually habitable spaces reducing the electrical demand you know and uh, uh, even to like uh, these uh, you know these uh, towers are also used these cooling towers are also used in some like uh, structures to minimize the actually uh, temperature of the like uh, air further if you see like the the road network you know this is a, a design in a like a very interesting serpentine uh, kind of a, uh, you know format where you will get to actually pass from uh, these uh, interesting uh, scenic areas you will have the rivers view you will have the view of the ravines and the, the other like uh, uh, trees uh, you know and uh, uh, the other like a uh, greenery areas uh, on this campus so this is how actually this road passes from here you see this location of this road you know and this is the location of this uh, gel mandap this is a centralized actually uh, water harvesting and uh, cleaning actually system on the site okay so further uh, if you see this uh, uh, they have actually uh, taken help of this shaded actually academic spine they call okay so it's a common actually shaded uh, long stretch where there is actually space frames used on the top you know to minimize the actually falling of direct uh, uh, sunlight in this actually area so this area is actually designed for like a walking and uh, uh, cycling here at the level so it, it connects actually different departments and uh, research labs from the like a uh, ground level so that people can easily take a walk hostel actually central court so the details over uh, uh, you can see over here how water bodies how the greenery have been uh, utilized to create actually uh, ambient actually temperature inside actually these premises further uh, like a pedestrian uh, friendly like a campus well uh, it's a griha five star rated actually project so you can see over here this is the plaque they received 
so one of the actually a very efficient uh, designs which has come up in the recent times well uh, here we will see the uh, the report you know how much of uh, uh, like the scoring this project has received so this is the actually griha ld actually documentation you know i have received from like a griha website you know so here uh, the slab of like this star rating if you see uh, impact on the site so the impact is if it is in the range of like 66 to 75 percent that project receives like one star you know if the impact is in the range of 56 to 65 percent it receives two star similarly 46 to 55 36 to 45 you know and uh, less than 35 so this project has actually received you can see over here is the overall project impact of this project is 25.89 so which is comfortably falling under the uh, this threshold of 35 you know so this uh, that this is why actually the uh, the rating given to this project is like a five star the further bifurcations you can see over here so on the resource impact how much it has fared so there are four actually parameters on the left you can read like a, a heat island calculator energy waste uh, water and uh, waste water you know solid waste management so overall it has uh, uh, like a these many scores on the environmental quality if you see like a, there are like a site planning energy water and waste water solid management uh, solid waste management transport social uh, performance assessment you know so it has received like a considerable actually uh, uh, actually this is score minimizing the actually impact so these are actually two major uh, uh, actually uh, uh, sets of like a criteria further in the detail we will see over here how much uh, uh, this project has actually failed on uh, uh, the finer actually criteria sets you know under these sections so this uh, you see this section of like site planning over here under uh, under this section there are two actually criteria you know under the section of energy there are like a three criteria you know similarly water and waste management has like a three criteria solid waste management here has like a uh, this like a one criteria you know so this is how it has actually uh, actually fared so the uh, reduction in the impact we can see like a here it it is able to actually uh, reduce uh, by like a 96 here it is able to reduce on the energy for like a 37 only and a waste and water management it has reduced up to like a 30 and uh, solid waste management in this criteria it has received like a 100 actually uh, a reduction in the impact so you see like uh, we can understand over here from since uh, the location of this uh, actually site is in such a like a uh, like a uh, tough actually climate and that is why they have to actually rely on the like a uh, electrical uh, gadgets for like a comfortable uh, creating like a comfortable environments so that is why actually dependence on electricity is reflected from like uh, uh, this actually uh, parameter Further, uh, like the, the the detail wise, this calculations you can see over here. This uh, data is also available uh, on the like uh, Agriha website. You can go and uh, actually download this data from there. You can understand and you can actually analyze point by point like how much of uh, like uh, evaluation uh, uh, this project has received on these uh, actually criteria. So this entire actually this uh, uh, this uh, documentation is uh, given over here for your understanding. So now from here and onwards, we will discuss uh, what kind of uh, you know designs and approaches they have utilized in this uh, actually projects. So they have used uh, this uh, confined masonry actually uh, construction technique. So the confined masonry buildings are expected to have better earthquake performance than uh, uh, unreinforced masonry wall construction and reinforced concrete frames with infills. The site is located in seismic zone three as per the Indian seismic code. Uh, which implies a shaking intensity of like a 7 you know on MSK, MSK scale Gujarat has experienced devastating earthquakes in recent history including in January 2001 when the Bhuj earthquake magnitude of like a 7.7 .7, the maximum shaking intensity of like a, a 10 struck the Kutch region of a Gujarat and uh, caused huge human and economic losses the death toll was the 13,805 approximately 130 uh, reinforced concrete frame buildings in Ahmedabad also collapsed leading to a death toll of 805. Evidence from like a numerous earthquakes in other countries indicate that good seismic performance can be achieved with confined machinery even without a high level of engineering provided the quality of construction is maintained. 
For this reason, it was decided that residential buildings at the IIT Gandhi Nagar permanent campus would be constructed in confined masonry. So this is actually a personal, uh, I think, an, an, an expert decision from like a, the, the director of IIT Gandhi Nagar and his team that uh, he himself is actually a civil engineer. Uh, so that, that is why actually they decided to go for actually this construction method, you know, with a constant monitoring to control the actually quality of the construction on the campus. Uh, so these are actually some uh, uh, details given about uh, this, uh, uh, the confined masonry actually structure on the on their like a documents you can see over here the uh, details you can see from their uh, documents so this is actually the segmentation you can see in these walls so there are actually n number of like a segmentations even these uh, windows and openings you know they have actually their own proper like individual like a segmentations in order to minimize the uh, stresses you know on uh, these joints because in the like a uh, event of like any earthquake uh, uh, like a uh, these tremors these actually joints are more vulnerable and are prone for like a ruptures and fractures actually and cracks so for whether it is like a shear or any like a kind of like a stress they have actually taken care of uh, through like a, this design about uh, building materials on the site Building materials used on the project were typically for like a, a RC and masonry construction in India. Cement, sand, coarse aggregate, bricks and reinforcing steel. Maintaining a continuous supply of bricks of required specifications presented a challenge due to the project scale. A few creative approaches were followed to meet these challenges, including building a plant on site to manufacture the FALG bricks. FALG means fly ash lime gypsum. So that were needed because of their like a higher compressive strength. Burnt clay bricks were also used. The use of these two different types of bricks was beneficial in expediting the project. So you can see the details of uh, FALG bricks over here. Fly ash lime gypsum. So you can, uh, the picture is on the right, right side. You see the, like a, this, uh, this brick is uh, of, like a, of a FALG and this is the conventional actually uh, red brick of like a, a clay burnt brick, you know. So this actually, uh, the, uh, actually manufacturing a facility of this FALG brick was erected on the campus so that a continuous and unhindered supply of this brick uh, material can be ensured because this is not usually available in the market outside. And uh, as a, like a raw material, they used actually fly ash from the nearby uh, thermal power plant because Gandhinagar has its own uh, like a power facility. It's uh, like a thermal power plant you can see in the pictures. You know, so they utilized this raw material which was readily available on this actually uh, power generation plant. Further, this uh, these are the some uh, sketches of uh, uh, this uh, confined uh, actually uh, brick masonry actually system. So you can see like how these reinforcement bars are actually laid in between these uh, two actually sections of this wall. Okay, and these are actually rugged, these are two thread actually, these uh, actually uh, brick forms, these layers, you know, have this uh, two thread like uh, arrangement and uh, how it will create a, you know, a, a closed tint actually formation, you know, inside once the concrete is actually poured. So this is actually a technique they have uh, adopted uh, to counter actually these, uh, uh, the, the high risk actually this uh, seismic uh, zone of India. In the next uh, slide here, you can see the water, water cycle adopted uh, at uh, IIT Gandhinagar. So like a sources uh, of like a from uh, of the water from here, if you see water from the like a Narmada canal and rainwater. So how well uh, water from the Narmada canal uh, goes, of course, for the like an expected actually, uh, this is uh, like a, a usage and recycling. But rainwater from the annual uh, like a, this rainfall, the uh, total rainfall actually collected over the year, it goes uh, like a starting from the like a rooftop to the like a surface runoff. So it is divided into two. So the rooftop actually water is taken into the, this uh, gel mandap you know directly because it's relatively much cleaner than the, the surface runoff okay and then it goes for like a, a converting into the like a fresh water in and a water for like a different consumption even for like a drinking you know bathing and other like a purposes and then the water from uh, this uh, a surface runoff is uh, taken for to the like a seasonal ponds you know or maybe uh, for the like a or a runoff to the river uh, finally like uh, from the stp you see there is a uh, like a uh, actually a feedback cycle uh, given over here so this water after like, uh, this uh, stp you know goes for like a uh, you know recycling to the like a uh, like a for more purposes even used for like a toilet flushing also and uh, then the even uh, the waste water you know coming out of these uh, waste uh, like these stp will go finally for the like a horticultural like a purpose for like a drip irrigation and like a you know watering the plants and agriculture on the campus 
So these is uh, these are the actually pictures on the left of this uh, gel mandap is the centralized actually uh, water harvesting actually facility on the campus of IIT and then you, you can see the uh, sketch of this uh, uh, 3D sketch of this uh, actually gel mandap over here. Okay, so this is the actually diagram of decentralized waste water actually treatment system you know uh, uh, adopted on uh, this particular actually uh, site of IIT Gandhinagar. So you can see from here the rainwater, you know the rainwater from the rooftop and the uh, the Gujarat actually this uh, water supply and sewage board, you know from the river uh, how it goes for the it goes for the filtration, you know treatment etc. For uh, drinking, you know dishwashing and other like uh, utility uh, activities. You know, and this recycled water actually goes for like a flushing works and the irrigation and like, a, you know, other things. So you can see like how, how this actually they have tried to close the cycle. So the, so the waste water actually generated from this flushing and like a drinking and washing and other like a utility things. It goes for like a uh, anaerobic actually a reactor, you know, it gets like a filtered on its own like naturally. Then it goes for like a further like a, a treatment, etc. Then again, it comes for like a, as a recycled water. And then it goes for the flushing. Finally, if now if it is not going there, then the the final like uh, the waste water goes for the like irrigation purposes. So this is the actually water cycle adopted on the site. Further, for the like a design optimization, they have actually conducted several like analytical uh, like exercises, simulations, etc. To come up with the final form and structure, you know, of uh, the buildings used, uh, buildings constructed in this campus, you see one of the uh, actually optimization analysis ex exercises uh, for the like residential actually areas for the, like a students and the staff and faculty over here. So the how many number of like a, a towers are actually needed for like a uh, this. Uh, uh, like a, there's a passive actually cooling of the air so you can see it was determined that a single tower provided the most cooling in the comparison of the other options so you see like a, there, here are like a three configuration so the first one has like a, the five towers the second has three towers the last one has the only one tower so it was found with this actually analysis the single tower actually a structure is more efficient compared to these ones okay so this was actually finally followed uh, on this actually campus so this is what I was talking about. Uh, they have actually taken uh, cues from like uh, the vernacular architectural system of uh, this Gujarat, particularly the city. So the, you, you see the picture on this left. So this is a typical actually image, a typical picture from like the residential neighborhood, you know, which are called like uh, Oles, you know, and uh, uh, the market uh, areas like uh, collectively they call them like Oles and Poles, you know, so the uh, you know, so this is actually a typical picture. So you see like how these overhangs, how these cantilever structures are actually partially covering these, uh, uh, these walkways over here, these alleys over here, you know, reducing the actually the exposure to the sun. Okay. And uh, with the stack effect, you know, there will be a uh, actually induced wind movement in this thing and relatively it remains like a cooler compared to the like uh, uh, upper parts of the buildings. Okay. So this is, uh, this was actually philosophy used in uh, creating like a such a, uh, you know such designs over here you see this uh, this is actually a shot uh, this is an image from like a residential area you know so uh, narrow actually openings and walkways they have actually created you know to replicate actually this effect over here finally bringing down the uh, like a bringing actually down the energy consumption and uh, increasing the energy efficiency this uh, actually slide uh, uh, elaborates on the uh, uh, the conceptual approach they have taken for like a, a creating the vegetation you know uh, actually planting the trees and uh, bushes and shrubs and plants on the campus so these are the actually uh, residential actually blocks uh, so this is how actually based on the actually prevailing uh, wind movement and the sun direction you know they have actually uh, planted the vegetation for the signage also uh, special actually uh, attention is paid you know they have actually uh, derived a uh, special actually a dedicated signage system for this campus so that the uh, signage system can be in place which will actually help the any outsider or even any resident of this campus for like an easy navigation through the campus. Flora and fauna you see this is the actually layout which clearly demarcates the Ravinus uh, actually uh, structure so these blue areas you can see from here actually the you see this uh, uh, detail from here so up to like uh, these uh, areas actually the water in the like a uh, flooding season actually uh, reaches till like, actually these levels so these actually areas are left like that you know for like a natural actually habitation to continue as it is so this is actually scheme devised for uh, uh, helping the flora and fauna on the campus well all the uh, on the sustainability aspects uh, 
these uh, also documents are given on the their like a website you know clearly mentioned how sustainability they have how they have achieved sustainability on this campus so these are given in these uh, like a finer details elements of green campus design approach to sustainability well uh, they have utilized the uh, state of the art listed actually uh, literature and uh, other resources available from like nbc so this is talking about the nbc over here approach to sustainability this is the part uh, 11 of the nbc 2016 we are talking about has been added to the nbc code of india igbc green township rating system you know agriha guidelines for a green large area development ld uh, the energy conservation building code ecbc that uh, uh, all of these things we have discussed in our like a previous lectures so all of these actually resources which are the uh, the best resources possible for actually uh, designers and architects and engineers to practice in this field today so they have actually utilized all of these resources for the design and development of their campus for the land use the carrying capacity of the campus has been determined by the permissible floor space index fsi it gandhinagar will not be able to use all the fsi as large green areas are needed for recreation in addition sustainable uh, substantial portions of the site include the ravines that need to be conserved socio economics if you see the current low rise uh, wall gives the message that both village and campus can coexist the, the, the one point i was uh, uh, mentioning initially you know so the boundary wall between the palaj village and the it gandhi nagar campus is intentionally kept low and uh, porous so that uh, a visual connection uh, actually an emotional connection will still like, be able to actually continue even if uh, this it gandhi nagar has come up but they they are not actually uh, closing it uh, suddenly and they are still allowing this interaction to actually keep uh, uh, continuing over the like a time energy efficiency and renewable energy so the main mode of transport on the campus is like walking and cycling you know passive down draft uh, uh, evaporating cooling systems you know you can see in this image over here are used in the residential areas the one uh, analytical figure i was discussing in the previous slides you know spray a fine mist of uh, water at a height resulting in cooling of air so this as i said like uh, this uh, place is a very uh, dry actually area so in this actually uh, one of the actually dry months you need like a humidification so these actually these water mist you know these sprinkler systems are placed uh, in like a uh, these are complexes where uh, it emits the fine mist you know uh, bringing down the actually the harsher actually effects of uh, dryness in the air you know by creating a uh, actually a humid and a, a pleasant actually atmosphere water and waste water management so the intent is to harvest rain water and use it in the building waste water is being treated through anaerobic bioreactors and through constructed wetlands you know vertical flows so you can see over here these are ravines and these actually natural topographical formations are used for like a rain water harvesting and uh, uh, retaining the water in the like a uh, ground for like a ground water discharge etc further solid waste management on site recycling of biodegradable materials and the transfer of recyclable materials to regional commercial recycling centers so they have their own like as i said earlier on site uh, uh, biodegradable material actually recycler unit on the campus so there is no actually kitchen waste or any organic waste which goes outside of this campus the only solid waste which is which cannot be recycled on the campus that only goes to the uh, designated actually recycling units you know for like a uh, you know uh, for the recycling and other purposes so they have actually taken care of like a facility maintenance monitoring and control you know adaptation and risk mitigation for the climate change etc so these are the actually important uh, factors which we come across uh, through this case study so these are the some images you can see like uh, this green waste recycling uh, plants like how is it functioning how the staff of this campus this institute are actually uh, volunteering themselves with the uh, with this actually common actually cause this intent to continue actually this uh, Uh, movement of like a sustainability on the campus you see some uh, actually images of like a uh, this bio uh, biogas plant over here you know this root zone actually treatment center uh, where a chana indica actually plant roots absorb pollutants from like effluent as part of the sewage treatments actually process this is actually conventional actually method of like you know for water treatment and uh, uh, actually filtration system so that is also employed on the campus and uh, on the right side you can see like a designated actually uh, waste bins are actually kept at uh, different uh, uh, places for like a garbage collection you know and uh, co compost pit is also there on this uh, right side you can see in this image well some more actually subtle impacts uh, which uh, uh, this campus is extending in a, like a positive way to the community 
is by actually responsibly uh, taking care of the workforce which is employed on their site you know by uh, extending the facility of education you know and recreation to these uh, children who are the actually children of uh, these uh, workforce on the campus you know so uh, educating them you know taking care of their like a uh, mental well-being is also actually taking their uh, actually taken care of so that actually they can uh, uh, become part of the mainstream of the society so they are not left out like like any other like a generic actually project but this project actually has tried to uh, serve to its like a social responsibility also finally uh, these are the some uh, different species of uh, uh, vegetation trees you know flora uh, you know which are uh, planted on the uh, campus these uh, most of these are actually uh, local actually species of uh, uh, these trees and all and they actually uh, flower in certain season they actually bloom in certain season so depending upon the uh, the requirement of the space and the places you know these uh, actually trees are planted on the campus so you can see like uh, they have used uh, these many varieties which are which shows like a conscious effort you know a positive intent to create actually a green and you know habitable actually uh, spaces in the like at gandhi nagar so i am sure in the years to come when the campus will grow to its like a full extent the uh, the habitats of uh, the occupants and the students and the faculty and the staff at those years will actually cherish uh, will actually praise the uh, efforts you know given by the uh, director and his team you know to actually uh, make this campus a sustainable one you know in a very long run so with this we have come to the end of uh, this lecture and i would suggest you visit the website of uh, this iit gandhi nagar you can uh, uh, google some more actually research material from the website and uh, you can actually uh, get more detailed information about this case example you must refer uh, in your like a design exercises as a role model as i said earlier so this uh, uh, with this we have come to the end of this lecture thank you everyone